Hey guys, got another knife review for you. This time, the CRKT Ripple by, whoops, I can do that better, by Ken Onion. Sorry, that was a epic failure of an opening. Um, yeah, so this is the cheaper Walmart edition of the Ripple. This is the model K415KXP. Um, this one having the aluminum handles and the liner lock as opposed to the steel frame lock. Uh, and this one also has a little bit less quality of a steel, which, I mean, it's still a good steel. It's 8CR14 MOV, not 8CR13 MOV, but 8CR14. Um, I can tell you they perform just about exactly the same. Uh, in fact, I have noticed no differences whatsoever between this and any of the 8CR13 MOV knives I've ever used. Um, honestly, to me, this knife is just an aluminum Kershaw chill with a uh, better opening. I mean, the blade shape is pretty similar. I know it's designed by Ken Onion, but this little finger ramp that extends with the handle really reminds me of RJ Martin's Kershaw chill, Kershaw volt, uh, those kind of designs. But I mean, it's still a really cool knife. Like, I think Ken Onion did a great job designing this. Uh, of course, this has the now famous Ikoma Kurth bearing system, or IKBS. Um, Ikoma Kurth being the uh, inventor of it. It was originally used on Balasongs, I think? Butterfly knives? Yeah. Um, but anyway, now it's in some production knives, and they're all so smooth just to open. It's incredible. Like. Uh, it barely takes anything. I mean, you can do this over and over. Like, even if your finger's sore, you can just push it out just enough to get past the detent, and it'll open. I mean, it's it's awesome. Uh, it's very rare. I mean, like, that time in the beginning uh, where I failed to open this is very rare. I mean, you really have to be doing something wrong <laughs> to not be able to get it open. I mean, you can even... Uh, it's kind of tough to do behind the tripod, but you can do little trick openings with it. It's kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's solely a flipper knife. There are no thumb studs, opening holes, nothing on this. I mean, you can, can't even pull it out like that. The detent is really good on this. Uh, I've tried and tried, but I can't shake this out. Um, and that's good because the detent builds up pressure enough that that will always come open. Um, it's awesome. Yeah, just the IKBS on this just makes it fly out. It's, it's great. Um. Let's see, the, like I said, the blade steel is 8CR14 MOV, um, it came pretty sharp, uh, I haven't put any of my own edge on this, I mean, and I've been using this a lot over the past couple days, uh, probably the past, let's see, I think I got this four or five days ago, but I mean, and that doesn't sound, um, like I, I probably used it enough, but, uh, I have used this thing quite a bit, opening food packages, opening knife packages, uh, opening a lot of things, cutting strings, uh, working with paracord, cutting out little stencils for paper, um, doing some food prep with it, washing it in between of course, but yeah, this HCR14 MOV steel, they really did the heat treat well on it, so uh, it performs well. You're not going to need to worry about it. It does rust though. Um, I really haven't checked this for any rust since I last wiped it down, but a couple days after owning this I did have some speckling on the surface of this, which was easy to take care of. I mean, you just wipe it down with some WD-40 or something like that. Uh, I have some metal polish that I use, but yeah, not that big of an issue. Um, the satin finish on it is better than the bead blast, which uh, most cheaper knives seem to have and that really rusts a lot. I think no 8CR13 MOV variant knife should ever be bead blasted unless you live in a place with like no humidity or no salt in the air, which I mean, I live on the coast, so that's a battle I'm always fighting, um, which is why nice VG10 or something is, is really nice to have, uh, or 440C for that matter, which has really good rust resistance. Um, Oh, I haven't even given specs on this knife. Yeah, so let's see. Overall, the knife is 7.5 inches. Uh, it is 4 and one third 
inches when closed, or the handle length, uh, and it's about two and a half ounces. And that means the blade is, let's see, three and one eighth inches long. Um, obviously, actually, you know what? They usually measure these from the very tip of the handle, which looks like it lines up right up with the cutting edge. So, yeah, you get about, I'll just say a little over three inches in cutting length edge. Uh, it's 0.1 inches thick. It's about a tenth of an inch. Nothing too crazy. I mean, this is marketed as the gentleman's tactical folder, which, uh, were I a gentleman in need of a tactical folder, I would totally consider this. I mean, it's very well designed. It looks very elegant um, as far as knives go uh, when you're still trying to have that cool look but not be scary. Um, it does have the rounded spine which is always really nice. I really like that. Uh, it just makes it much more comfortable to really kind of put your finger on there. If you don't want the coarse jimping, you just kind of want to press against sort of rounded out metal instead when you don't need to worry about slipping. This is very nice. Um, and it does taper down slightly with this little swedge uh, at the top so it gets easier to penetrate into something with the tip as you approach this tip which is nice um, it's a hollow grind so it's got that sort of rounded I don't know if this will add work at all probably not yeah I don't think so um, but I'm sure you guys know what a hollow grind is uh, it's instead of um, actually, you know what, there's probably a way to see it if you look at it through down here. Maybe not. Actually, I'll just use these dodo as a way to look at that. Um, yeah, as you can see, it doesn't, you know, I'll just do this. The actual blade is ground like this instead of straight. It kind of curves down into a point. Um, it does make for a much thinner edge and a little bit less friction when trying to slice things, which is nice. Uh, so, I mean, I have no complaints with that kind of grind. They did it really well. And you got the flat portion here if you want to use certain sharpeners for it. It also gives it a little bit more durability, having that hollow grind. Uh, it's much thicker up here, so it's not going to, like, snap the blade off, although you would never use this for something in which that would be a concern at all. So, yeah. Uh, this does have a pocket clip right here, as you can see. This is the only place you can put it, which they designed this very well so that when your thumb's up here, uh, it feels like there's much more width to this knife, knife than there is because of the pocket clip, um, mostly right here, where your thumb uh, makes contact. It, it feels like it's on almost, it feels like the whole knife is like out to here, it would be like this thick. Um, it's a really nice design so you get a really good thumb purchase right there so I think that's they designed the clip perfectly on this thing it retains very well uh, no complaints about that it sits in the pocket about that much I mean it's not that intimidating so you really won't have any issues with that uh, oh one issue I do have blade play in this which I will not be able to get rid of unless I want this so tight that I can't flick it out but it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not an issue. You can, you only kind of feel it, but yeah, so the tolerances on this are, I mean, for what it is, it's pretty good. Uh, it's not that centered, but it's close enough. It doesn't rub up against anything, so it's fine. Yeah, let's see, what else is there to talk about? Um, oh, the jimping on the knife, like I said from earlier, on the spine, it's very good. And you get this jimping on the flipper, which is nice because what I like to do is I like to get my finger in between, or my fingernail, in between the ridges of the jimping, and that's where I kind of grip onto to kind of push down and flick it out. So I like when flippers have jimping on them. It makes it much easier. But uh, like I said, with the IKBS bearing system, you will not need much, much of any effort to flip this out, which is really nice. Uh, I do like the fit and finish on this. I mean, for... What it is, it's it's really well put together. Um, this kind of is all flush and kind of really natural curves, which is, you know, I'm sure anyone who knows of Ken Onion's work is really familiar with that. He has very flowing design knives, which is nice. 
it's almost more I think it's like polished right here more than it is on other parts of the knife, um, which it's kind of neat. I mean, it's just a nice little detail. Uh, not that important. Doesn't really do much. Yes, this is the liner lock one, like I said earlier. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of an early-ish lockup, but it's worn in a little bit now. Um, so it's about, I'd call that 50%, which, you know, I, I've never had an issue with that with any of my knives. Um, yeah, I did wear this in a little bit. It's much smoother than when I got it, which isn't to say that it doesn't come smooth. This comes very smooth. Uh, you guys saw my unboxing. It was just first try. It just came out really nice. Yeah. So that is the uh, CRKT Ripple. I'd recommend these. Um, definitely a less threatening knife in its price category, which is in and around $20 to $30, which I think is a great price for this. Um, you really can't go wrong with it. Uh, it's not my first CRKT, but you know, this is probably my favorite one I've had. Um, definitely, so there's that to that. Yeah. Uh, not much else to say here. Just kind of rambling, making sure I didn't forget anything. Uh, oh, Torx construction, half flow through, half backspacer. Uh, as you can see, the jimping, it lines up perfectly with a clip, which is really cool. Even the curve of it, they did that really well. So I think that's neat. So that's about it. Uh, oh, one last thing. Sorry. Uh, the finish. They do buff out a little bit of the ridges to kind of give it a pocket-worn look, which um, it's, it's alright. It's not that cool. Uh, they're all different, if, from my understanding. They hand buff them, so each one comes out just a little bit different. I think it kind of looks cool with the contrast, but it it's not a, you know, it could have been left out. Um, maybe that would have shaved off a couple dollars, too, in the price, which is already not an issue, but hey, if it was cheaper, that'd be even better. Um, yeah. Alright, so, recommend this. Definitely. Definitely pick one up if you can. You can't go wrong with it. It's just sweet. Thanks for watching.